on state, local government, and veterans uh, is coming to order. Uh, a quorum is present. I would like to invite uh, Senator Kunish to join us. I am going to take Senate File 386 as amended uh, from the table. It is before the committee. Uh, as a reminder, uh, we took this bill up uh, at the end of our last meeting on Tuesday. Uh, we had testimony from the chairman, uh, from a student leader. Uh, we haven't had a bill presentation specifically yet, uh, but we did offer uh, or add your A2 amendment, your author's amendment, Senator Kunish. Uh, and so we are here uh, now to take up your bill. Um, a couple of things uh, for members. Uh, and I'm going to follow up with this in writing, but I just want to uh, put this on the record for us. Uh, for members who uh, end up meeting, uh, in, they're joining us, but virtually, it would be, I think, I would ask that people let me know ahead of time uh, if you're going to be meeting virtually uh, rather than being present in the room uh, so that uh, our staff can prepare for that and they can know about it and we make sure that we are uh, uh, getting you properly announced and recorded. Uh, so I will put that into writing. And then I have been talking uh, with many, but not all of us yet, so I'm gonna follow up with this in writing as well. But I think it is important for us uh, to uh, recognize that we have a lot of work in this committee. Um, and we're gonna be hearing a lot of proposals and a lot of bills. We meet uh, for four hours a week. We're always gonna be under some time pressure. Uh, and I think it would be helpful if we could take a bit of a leap of faith together in the work that they were doing. And we, uh, those of us who have served, understand that there are going to be times when there are going to be issues coming before the committee where we have sharp divisions, where there may be disagreements, and there may be amendments that are about a debate more than about approving the bill. That is a part of how we do our work. But I also think that we are policymakers. Our goal in these committees is to examine the bills, to discern, to improve them with amendments. And if you have an amendment or an idea that you believe is with intention to improve the proposal, I'm going to ask everybody to please reach out to the author of the bill ahead of the committee to try and work through some of that. So we're not necessarily surprising one another, or more importantly, having to decide an important issue under such time constraint. I think that is gonna yield better policy for us. And it does require taking a bit of a leap of faith because we're not always gonna agree, uh, but I think we could get to a better outcome if we do that. When we convened on the very first meeting, uh, I, I urged members, uh, if you have an amendment, share it ahead of time. If we share it ahead of time, we can post it so the public knows about it. I think that is an important feature of our transparency. It also helps us do our work because we're better prepared. If you have an amendment that you've drafted but don't want to share it um, and don't want it posted, I would still be really grateful as the chair and for the work of this committee if I could get those amendments when we come into the committee um, so that we have them um, here and so they're not a surprise. And last, I think for our council and for our pages and for the staff, uh, the more that we're able to get those things in order before we actually get working, the better our time use will be. So as I said at the start, I'm going to put this into the writing, into writing so we have it together. Uh, I think it is important that if we're trying to improve proposals, that we are working with the bill author, and I'm going to be asking people going forward, have you talked to the author about this proposal um, when there's an amendment? Uh, mm -hmm. And then last but not least, in order to manage time, because we do have work that we need to do, and today we need to be out of here by 2.45, I am going to start going forward after today putting some time limitations on the amount of time we're going to spend on amendments and debates so that we make sure we take our votes and get out of the committee. So I want to make sure that the voices of our members, both the minority and the majority, are heard. I want to make sure that our bills are getting a fair hearing. Um, and I want to make sure that we keep moving uh, our issues so that members who are bringing bills before this committee can get them through the committee with a proper and full airing and on their way. So thank you for hearing that. I'm going to put it into writing. And with that, Senator Kunish, welcome to the committee. Please introduce yourself and tell us about your bill. 
Sure, I'm um, Senator Mary Kunish, and I am here today to um, share with you Senate File 386. And this is a bill that would create a commission to redesign the official state flag and the official seal. And um, it would require a report. And um, I think it, it comes, um, I've been carrying this, or I carried this bill, because as a House member, uh, probably five or six years ago, uh, I had somebody approach me, a constituent approach me, and have me a really good talk about why we ought to look at refreshing the flag. And then, uh, in speaking with some of my other House members, they too had been approached. And so, along those lines, we started looking at um, the possibility of redesigning and refreshing our state flag. Um, it is unfortunate that Minnesota state flag is, worse, is ranked as one of the worst 10 state flags by the North America Vexological um, Association. This group is dedicated to the academic study of flags, and it gives really low uh, ratings to the flag like ours because, um, as they said, it looks like a state seal on a bed sheet. So there's five good principles of a good flag. The very first one is to keep it simple. The flag should be so simple that a child could draw it from memory. And as a teacher, I remember many times when we go through the Minnesota history um, units in our, in our classrooms, um, and asking kids to look at the seal, you know, draw your version of the seal of what it looks like, and it was really too complicated for for kids to to um, to draw. And there's, you know, just like really good pieces of art, there are often symbols in these pieces of art that, um, that refer to something else. And so the lady slipper, um, the Indian riding off into the, into the sunset, um, the, the settler that's plowing up the, the virgin land that was once Indian country, those are symbols in there that our students just don't even understand. The other thing that is a part of a good principle of a good flag is to use just two or three basic colors. Limit the number of colors on the flag to three, two or three, which contrast well and come from the standard color set. There should be no lettering or seals according to best designs. Never use writing on any kind um, uh, on any kind or an organizer's seal. And, and if you studied the history of the flag at one time, uh, the backside, everything was, was backwards. And so if you were behind this, the flag, everything appeared um, uh, backwards to you. Uh, it should be distinctive or be related. So avoiding duplicating other flags, but using similarities to show connections. And then, of course, I, as I mentioned on Tuesday, uh, use meaningful symbolism. The flag's images, the colors, and the patterns should relate to what it symbolizes. Uh, and if you, as I mentioned, if we look at the history of the Minnesota flag, uh, I think the original one, what came about in 1849, and then the seal came in uh, was came along in 1858, and uh, a few changes in 1861 through 65, and uh, the very first Minnesota state flag was in 1893. So by 1957, um, there was a second Minnesota flag. And that was due to the infrequent use of the state flag and complaints about the bulk and expense caused the legislature to simplify its design in preparation for the state centennial. Um, there was an interim committee that was established to work out the details and the new flag became law in 1957. So for some of us, that wasn't so long ago. Um, both sides of the new flag were blue, and the reverse side being at the mirror image of the um, obverse. Citing problems with the committee's idea, several legislators had instead proposed a completely new design, which was red, white, and blue with gold stars. Chief among these legislators was Representative John Tracy Anderson, um, who collaborated with the then uh, adjunct general. 
So then that we went on to eight, uh, 1983 where we had a third state flag. So this is not unusual that we amend the flag. In 1968, the state human right commissioner asked the secretary of state to have the state seal changed because complaints said it portrayed the flight of the Indian from the pioneer. The request was considered inopportune. However, in the 1960s, Secretary of State introduced a new seal in which the fleeing Indian was replaced by a pioneer on horseback. This seal was never used on the state flag. And then in 1983, a new law restored the Indian to the seal, standardized the seal's exact design, and uh, since then, many small differences became clear in various rend uh, renditions. Fast forward to 1989. In 1989, a citizens coalition began to campaign for a new flag. So this is not, this is not new. This is something that this coalition has been working on um, since then. They also, um, they wanted to have a new flag in, in time for the centennial. Uh, and they proposed the retention of the current flag as a ceremonial standard for state executive offices. There were hearings, just as we are having hearings right now, and um, those hearings, or th that bill was sponsored in bipartisan support with um, Representative Wayne Simino, who is a DFL member, and Representative Gil um, Gutnick. Gutnick, is that how I say that? Okay, uh, who was a Republican. Um, the House leadership did not uh, allow that study to continue. Nonetheless, um, there were a lot of people that supported it and endorsed it, and there was even a contest for kids to come up with a new, um, a new flag. The proposal by the Citizen Coalition is based on the following international standards for flag design to espouse Minnesota's ideals. The Minnesota message must be timeless, it must use traditional colors and symbols, and it must be unifying. To identify our state, it should have a proper graphic form, it must communicate well at a distance, and one must be able to remember its design and meaning, and it must be easy to distinguish from other flags. And then the third component is to be widely used. It should um, not be too costly. It should be able to um, be manipulated in various shapes and sizes, and it should admit to the exact legal standardization. So we're not changing the size, uh, the official size, like the one that we see back there, but you know, when we have those small desk ones or other ways, um, then it could be. Then we go to 2001, and that's when our experts rate Minnesota flag as being poor. A national organization of flag scholars published a survey in which experts rated Minnesota's current flags as one of the 10 worst designs in the US and Canada. The expert survey judged flag design according to their visibility at a distance and effective use of pattern and symbol. New organizations wild report, wildly reported the study and this study still bolsters legislative efforts to change the flag. And that's why we are here today. So in uh, between 2000 and 2007, more proposals for the state flag. Um, Senator Edward Oliver proposed that the state flag be changed. He had Senate file 3201 back in the day. Um, let's see. In March of 2006, Senator Linda Higgins reintroduced the bill and by um, early 2018, uh, legislators introduced a pair of bills and that was, those were the bills that I was, uh, that I participated in over, the, over in the House. Um, in uh, the last couple of sessions, we have had Senator, or Representative um, Freiburg and Senator, excuse me, uh, Representative Fisher both um, championing this and they really uh, encouraged me to, to be the author of this bill and I'm very proud to be here. So um, uh, we're looking at all of these different aspects of our state flag and we're recognizing that we, we are not following best practices for a flag. And the last part, as I mentioned, the important part of symbolism in our flag. We want it to be something that, that unites all of us, 
that doesn't cause offense or bring up um, a distorted history or uh, a, a history that not everybody agrees on. So um, as I mentioned on Tuesday, the seal right now depicts a white settler taking possession of the land and the waters of Minnesota, tilling the land in the foreground with a Native American on a horse in the background, riding off into the sunset. This story illustrates, um, fails to tell the authentic story of Minnesota's violence against our original inhabitants, the Dakota and the Anishinaabe. So if we look back again at the history of Minnesota, in the 1840s, when American settlers reached Minnesota, we know that the Dakota people lived in, uh, um, along the Mississippi and the Minnesota rivers on prairie lands that were absolutely ideal for plowing and planting. That, may, that, uh, that fact made those farmers and settlers very eager to use it in a way that they seemed um, best to them. The settlers felt that if the Indians did not want the land to farm, then they should move away, whether they wanted to or not. The Dakota did not move on, but they were, faced by, we, they were forced by the US government to give up their hunting ground. This is a very, very sad, and it is a very painful part of Minnesota's history, the Indians and their loss of land. And that loss is what is pictured on our state seal. And that is what we are asking um, to be redone. Um, the, the task was given to um, a gentleman, uh, I forget his first name, Eastman, but his wife, Mary Eastman, Eastman, was the wife of the soldier artist, Seth Eastman, Eastman who helped design the seal. And she wrote this um, poem about, a mealing, uh, about um, the meaning of the poem. So if there are people that you know, maybe don't interpret the seal as it is, um, I think she illustrates it very clearly in this poem. And it's, uh, it goes like this. It says, give away, give way, young warrior. Thou and thy steed give way. Rest not, though lingers on the hills. The red sun's parting ray, the rock bluff and prairie land, the white man claims them now. The symbol of his course are here, the rifle, the ax, and the plow. So that is what those symbols on our state um, seal depict. And for um, our, our uh, indigenous people, we do find it um, um, disingenuous and hurtful. And we would like to um, you all to consider the, uh, um, this committee or this group that would go forward and come up with a flag that we can all be proud of. We are supposed to be proud of our state symbol, and it's hard to be um, proud of a seal that seems to say our indigenous people are not wanted in their own state. We have to remember that in 1968, Minnesota Human Rights Commission asked the state government to design a new seal that all Minnesotas could be proud of. And so members, I would ask you to um, consider this bill, and I would ask that we could have that true bipartisan support in creating a committee that will um, look at the possibility of putting together a flag that we can all be proud of. Thank you, um, Senator Kunish, uh, for your proposal and for your testimony. Members, are there questions or amendments? And we will be voting on this proposal by 2.40. Senator Draskowski. Thank you, Madam Chair. Thank you, Senator Kunish. Um, yeah, I uh, had a chance to uh, hear some of the earlier iterations of the bill in the House as well, and I remember Representative Freiberg and Fisher bringing those bills and having some discussion. Um, I was listening to the testimony of the, the gentleman who was here um, when we met last, two days ago now, um, and I was troubled by some of the things he was saying. One of them, he said that, uh, that the uh, settler was somehow aiming a gun at, uh, the, at the Indian in our image of, in our flag. And so that was 
alarming to me, and so I had to go do some research and find out if we could get a detailed depiction of what the the emblem is and what the you know what the what the flag has in it now. And so there's a handout coming around now that has two different iterations and. Senator Kanush, I, I don't know which years these, these are in kind of your chronology that you went through, um, but uh, I have uh, used guns many times, and uh, I can tell you that as we look at the what appears to be the most recent iteration on top, uh, what you're seeing there is a rifle, a musket, um, likely of some sort. Apparently, there's a uh, it is a musket from way back when. Um, that is leaning up against a stump. And I can tell you uh, with 100% certainty that that musket is pointed in the air, not uh, at a direct 90, with the surf 90 degree uh, with the surface, but pretty close. And so that rifle is pointed at no one. Um, and uh, at the same time, the only person in the picture that's armed is the Indian man, or women, or it must be a man, I think. Um, and so I struggle when we have testimony that comes forward that isn't accurate um, and is obviously not accurate. Uh, and um, certainly we want not only, and I understand that there's different understandings and interpretations of, of history throughout the years and that one person might have one and one another, and maybe the truth around the history could be somewhere in the middle. Um, and as I looked at this emblem, I thought, you know, I don't see anybody fighting in this thing. Um, I see two individuals coexisting, and that's what it looks like to me. So, I, and again, I think maybe you pointed that out and, and was pointed out at the last hearing too that, and the gentleman did point that out that there's different, um, pe different people will take away different understandings or interpretations of what they see in the seal and in the flag. Um, so anyway, I, I wanted to share that um, and certainly uh, there's, there's nobody pointing a gun at anybody in this uh, flag, so I did need to correct the record. It's 100% uh, certain that that's the case. Um, the rest of the discussion certainly is debatable and has probably been cussed and discussed many times, um, you know, by many different people. Um, one of the things going to this uh, commission or committee that um, is included in the bill. Um, and we did see, like, I think, Senator Kanish, were there three or four uh, images last time? I think there were four different uh, images uh, that were put up by the high school, uh, or he, maybe he's out of high school by now, the young man uh, who has been studying flags for four years. Um, but each of them, as I looked at them, they're, you know, we're going to, we're not, we're going to take a focus away from history if we go in that direction. And that's certainly part of the discussion that we need to, to have. Are we going to, is the flag going to be an attempt to try to depict history uh, of our state or not? And obviously it has been in the past and going to what, what you know, a kind of a different approach in some of the criteria, Senator, that you outlined, um, we'll move away from that and we'll, we'll, take a different course, if you will. Um, so that's certainly one thing we have to think about um, as we go forward. And, you know, if we're going to do this and go in that direction, we're going to lose the historical context and historical reflection uh, that is in our seal and our flag as we go forward if we do that. So I think as a state we need to figure out if we're going to do that or not. If we do um, decide to do that, and I, and personally, I. I, I don't have a I don't have a a, a dog in the fight that way. I, I I mean I think either way there's there's pluses and minuses, um, either way for sure. Um, I do have though an amendment because I've got a wonderful idea, Madam Chair, that um, I think would um, maybe get us there sooner, and um, bring certainly uh, Minnesota together 
in a really a unified way around a unified flag design uh, that I think uh, is the solution. And so I've got an amendment. It's the A6 amendment. Senator Draskowski moves the A6 amendment. Um, oh. We are going to get a copy of the A6 amendment to the bill's author. And it is being distributed right now to committee members. Senator Draskowski, would you like to uh, describe your amendment or talk about what is there? I will. Thank you, Madam Chair. And I was hoping it could go up on the screen, members, and, and Senator Kanush, but um, I was told the technology wasn't, the electrons weren't warmed up yet. So um, we're unable to put it up on the screen. But I can tell you there's an image going around. The background is in green on here. And uh, if you take a look at it, um, it depicts the North Star, the North Star State, which Minnesota is. And I think uh, I've talked to uh, a number of senators, um, uh, about half of them Democrats, and I haven't found one that uh, doesn't think this is a wonderful idea um, at this point to bring forward uh, what could be our next state flag. And so this is the amendment. Um, the technical part of the amendment, Madam Chair, is uh, I trust is uh, a representation of this. And so um, with that, I move the A6 amendment and uh, urge uh, the committee to adopt it and uh, move us on to our next state flag. Thank you, Madam Chair. Thank you, Senator Draskowski, for the A6 amendment and for the graphic design of um, Senator Kunish, have you gotten this yeah. yet? Okay, so. for the graphic design that you have yeah. provided for us, yeah, which sure. is, of course, a fairly recognizable uh, logo from those of us who love hockey. Um, so, uh, Senator Kunish, uh, seeing this, uh, I understand that this amendment would, I think, essentially replace the process that you, you're wanting to put in place with uh, a new logo. Um, do you have uh, feedback for us on uh, this amendment? Yes, thank you, Ms. Um, <clears throat> Madam Chair. Um, I would not accept this amendment. First of all, it, um, I did not have a conversation with the author of this, men, um, uh, this amendment prior to this, and I certainly am not going to um, presume that the author of this amendment um, would be the one and only to make the decision on what the next Minnesota uh, flag and seal should look like. The important part of this bill, Senate File 38, is to take it to the people of Minnesota, is to create um, a commission that is tasked with a number of different members, um, members that are uh, appointed by the governor, um, speaker of the house and, and, and leader, and uh, the, the Senate are um, part of this, so perhaps Senator Dreskowski could get himself um, assigned to that and put in his two cents. Um, but it also makes sure that it has the review and the input of our diverse communities. So for example, um, the committee would uh, include somebody from the Minnesota Council of, for Minnesotas of African American Heritage because they are certainly part of our, um, our history. One member from the Council on Latino Affairs because this is also a large part of our community. Um, a, a member from the Council on the Asian Pacific Minnesotans as well as um, those representing um, our, um, somebody from the Indian Affairs. But it also allows for uh, the committee to go outside of our, you know, our uh, Senate area or our legislature and ask for designs and suggestions. And I think personally that could be a, an incredible opportunity for Minnesotans, young and old, um, to, to give us their idea or their perspective. Um, the, what, the image that uh, Senator Draskowski gives here is certainly one that we are all familiar with, but um, I don't know that that would, um, that would be in, um, in offense of any kind of copyright laws or anything like that. And so um, with that, I would decline to accept this amendment. 
Thank you, Senator Kunish. I have a couple of questions from members. Uh, Senator Swadzinski. I, uh, I'm opposed to the amendment as well. Considering the green background is too reminiscent of Norm Green, who, as I recall, took the North Stars to Texas with him. And so, but it, I appreciate that it does meet the four requirements, and I want to be the first one on this committee to use the word vex, vex. <laughs> <laughs> or try to say the word vexologist. So I do appreciate that, and um, I just think uh, we this is a great bill without the amendment, and let's get this process going and try to get some kids involved. A letter, um, you, I'm guessing the author of the bill put in here from that sixth grade teacher is really a great thing. I hope every, all the committee members take a minute. To, uh, it only takes a minute to read it, but it's pretty... Um, profound state, um, letter from a sixth grade teacher. Senator Chizinski. Uh, thank you, Madam Chair. And it's a, a little bit to the amendment, just because, uh, or thank you, Madam Chair. It's a little bit to the amendment, but a little bit not. It was just some of the comments that Senator Kunish made about having people of the whole state put, have input to this. And, and looking at the membership meetings and, and who's involved, I'm going to go to lines 1.18, uh, one member appointed by the Council of American, uh, Minnesota's for African Heritage which if you look at the state, the demographics represents about 7.4% of our state. Uh, the next one, 1.191 member from the Minnesota uh, Council on Latino Affairs, which the Latinos uh, affect about, or are about 5.8% of our population. Uh, lines 1.2, one member appointed by the Council of Asian Pacific Minnesotans, which is about, represents about 5.4% of our population here in Minnesota. Uh, going on the next page, lines 2.2, uh, one member representing the Ojibwe uh, and Indian Affairs, which I, if you look at the Indians uh, on or the Dakota and on the, our demographics, about 1.4 percent of our community, which leaves about 83 percent of our population that's not being represented on this board specifically. Uh, we'd have nobody from the German community, the Irish community. We have a pretty big Polish caucus here. No one from the Polish uh, community, the Czech community, the Danish community, the Norwegian community the Swedish community, the Jewish community, no one specifically is appointed there, but we have a lot of people or a, a specific number of the other people. So why would we not make a representative of the whole state uh, on that board if we're gonna truly look at this? Uh, and I always hear the inclusion thing from, from the other side, we make sure inclusion. Well, I don't see inclusion in the board here, uh, what represents the state demographics. So I guess my question is, is why are we not representing all of Minnesota to have input on this flag, uh, and specifically some of the people from that communities that I've, I've listed? Mm -hmm. um, th thank you. Senator Jasinski, uh, because we took this bill up in uh, the hearing on Tuesday and laid it on the table and then came back to it, uh, and I had, to, I had to get my paper in order as well. We had we'd amended the bill with the A2 amendment, which is a delete all. So. Um, I think the list that you referred to was the original bill. The delete all does have a little bit more. There are other groups enumerated in this, the A2, as before us, that I can share with you mine. Um, it won't be as detailed as what you just described, but I think it is more, there, there's more, there are more participants laid out in the A2 amendment. Uh, Senator Kunish, did you have anything you wanted to add? Um, I would just say that, you know, it would be lovely to have all of those um, represented, I mean, I myself am French, Czech, English, Irish, all of those, you know, Scottish, all of those things. Um, and I think that when you look at the list under the, um, the amendment, there certainly is opportunity for those folks that represent those different groups to be participants in there. Senator Jasinski. And thank you, Madam Chair, and uh, Senator Kunish, uh, just as well as, as in the other highlighted items as well. So I think if we're specifically going to put the Latinos, the African Americans, the or African heritage, the Asian Pacific, why are we not specifically doing the ones that I did as well? And again, I, I get it could be a balanced board, and, and I'll go to the A2, which I'm looking at now as well. But again, there's nothing, nothing that I... Uh, talked in my discussion about the, what call them Europeans or whatever, I guess the technical word for it, but there's no representation on, on, on this, on the original bill mm -hmm. or the A2 amendment. So again, if we want to have inclusion in this state, which everybody is fighting for, why are we specifically not having 
uh, what represents 83% of our population? Mm -hmm. That's my question to the, to the uh, committee. And I think I did answer that. Thank you, Senator Kunish. To the A6 amendment before us, Senator Jaskowski, did you have anything more? Thank you, Madam Chair. Um, yeah, I, I, I mean, I think Senator Jasinski's points are, are, are very supportive of this amendment. Um, this, is a, this is a flag that will unify Minnesota. Mm -hmm. And that's, I think we can all agree on that. Um, we need a flag that's gonna bring us together. Having a process that, that may not include everyone um, very likely is going to leave people out is not what we want to do. And so I would, I would encourage people to uh, support the A2 amendment. And, you know, Senator Kanush, uh, it's not me making the decision. I'm bringing an idea forward. Uh, this committee is in the process of deciding whether or not to adopt it uh, or amend it. Um, and certainly the full Senate and the House and the governor would have to weigh in like they do with any other bill. Um, it simply would get to where we need to get to um, quicker and in a way that, um, that doesn't disenfranchise people in the process. Um, and I, so I, I do appreciate what Senator Jasinski had to say, and I think this uh, helps us avoid that, Madam Chair. So I encourage your uh, support for the amendment. Thank you, Senator Draskowski. Seeing no further discussion, all those in favor of the A6 amendment, please say aye. Roll call being requested. Roll call granted. The clerk will take the roll. Chair Murphy? Nope. Chair, or Lee Anderson? Yes. Senator Barr? Yes. Senator Carlson? No. Senator Swazinski? No. Senator Drizkowski? Aye. Senator Fate? No. Senator Gustafson? No. Senator Jasinski? Aye. Senator Curran? Yes. Senator Lang? Aye. Senator McQuaid? No. Senator Morrison? No. There being six ayes and seven noes, the amendment is not adopted. Madam Chair. Senator Anderson. Thank you, Madam Chair. Well, based on what I just heard from Senator Jasinski uh, talking about the, the way this um, uh, group of people are going to be de designated and brought up as a, a group of individuals to oversee the uh, design and the makeup of an official flag, I would like to have a roll call on the bill when, the, when that time comes forward. Thank you. Roll call is requested. The other questions? Seeing no further discussion, Senator Carlson. Thank you, Madam Chair. I, I, I guess I have to say that I'm, I'm not quite sure if I like the way we're putting this together because uh, you know, back and forth we're going to that this is a historical article and you know, I would personally feel like much better if we put you know, uh, history teachers on it. We put somebody, you know, somebody that uh, knows where we've come from rather than where we are right now. Because uh, where we are right now, I mean, it might, might be something interesting, but uh, we did have some samples that are, uh, I'm sorry, we have the, the executive director of the Historical Society, but I don't know that that's more than just one vote. And I'd, I'd like, you know, I'd like to have Suzinski on it, you know, because uh, um, that's that's the kind of history we need to recognize, um, and what we're trying to get away from here. And I've had constituents that have come to me and said that they want to see the flag uh, design change too. And their major issue was uh, people can't draw it; they they don't know what to draw. And well, okay, that's that's a yeah, a good perspective, but. Uh, we don't want something that's so simple and so 
recent to be, you know, a star or something that is just that uh, has no background. And in fact, I, I told uh, Senator Draskowski here that uh, I kind of liked his, but it's not something that represents uh, a greater number of people that vote for it. So I, I'm I'm a little concerned about having the focus be on more recent um, knowledge, you know, have sixth graders do it. You know, they wouldn't recognize what, what the state has gone through over the many years. Maybe even we should have somebody that represents especially the French because this state was French at one time. So there's a, there's a lot of history there that, and I don't want this to be something where we have a, uh, a war that's in remembrance. That's, that's what we have here now is a, is a war. The, the uh, war against the indigenous people. I, I don't think I want to see anything that represents that. But I do want to see something that has some history. And you know, while I was thinking, what image would I put on there if I would be the person that would have the final decision? Well, it would kind of be you know, the star that's in the, uh, uh, in the rotunda. Uh, you know, that's, that represents the state, and it's already here, and it's something that everybody recognizes. And when you come to visit the Capitol, there's a lot of explanation of that star, and none of it is political that I'm aware of. None of it is uh, deals with race or deals with um, taking over the land that we actually did do. Uh, so I'm I'm concerned about that, and I guess uh, I don't know that that is represented in the the selection of people on that commission, but I'm hoping that it that there would be some emphasis just on history. Senator Kunish. So thank you, Madam Chair. Thank Sen you. Thank you, Senator Carlson. I appreciate that as you are, um, and of course, we've all reviewed this proposal. Uh, uh, I think whoever is appointed to this commission, uh, when it is uh, put in place, is going to have, a crew is going to have quite a job because obviously there is a fair amount of interest um, in this topic. Um, I heard about it long before I, I came to this committee. Um, I heard about it in the House. But I do think that um, the group is going to have to work together through the set of issues that we're hearing discussed here, and there will be more. Uh, I think it is important to note uh, that there are opportunities, in addition to the people publicly appointed to the commission, serving in a public commission, uh, they may solicit and secure the service and aid of uh, the people uh, that know how to design a flag. I'm not going to say that word. Um, and they can also solicit public feedback and suggestions to inform its work. Uh, as I have read through this, I feel like it is constructed in such a way that it will take full advantage of the perspectives of people from a variety of backgrounds with a, 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 a pers deep perspectives um, that can conclude and bring forward something that we can consider. Uh, I understand that this group will meet at the Historical Society. There will be a member from that group, which brings history. There's art. There's architecture. There are a wide variety of voices that are coming to this proposal. Um, and so while I appreciate that, um, Senator Carlson, and I do think you know this is going to be heard next in the Rules Committee, so you can speak with Senator Kunish if you think there needs to be uh, some fine-tuning. Um, but with that, uh, I'm seeing no further discussion. The clerk will take the roll on Senate File 386, which I move as amended uh, to be re referred, re referred to the Committee on Rules. All those, oh, excuse me, the clerk will take the roll. Chair Murphy? Yes. Vice Chair Mitchell? Yes. Lead Anderson? Senator Barr? No. Senator Carlson? Yes. Senator Swazinski? Yes. Senator Draskowski? No. Senator Fate? Yes. Senator Gustafson? Yes. Senator Jasinski? No. Senator Curran? Senator Lang? No. Senator May Quaid? Yes. Senator Morrison? Yes. Lead Anderson? No. Oh, sorry. No. 
Okay. <laughs> Senator Graham is a no. I appreciate members coming back to vote. Uh, I really do. Uh, there being eight ayes and six noes, uh, Senate File 386 uh, is adopted as amended and re-referred to the Committee on Rules. Thank you very much for being here. And members, with that, we are adjourned. <laughs>